now on Youth TV, it's time for bed for tonight. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bed for Tonight with Michelle Papworth, Millie Colson, Anna Maria, Katrina, and me, Ashton. Here is what we are looking at today the crime figures in Central West and the East of Bedford, and Michelle's interview with community officers Emily Hurst and Jeff Presswell. Right, hello, everyone, and welcome to our new show on News TV, Bed for Tonight. We are going to be here for 30 minutes, bringing you the latest stats from Bedford and surrounding areas with a team of incredible panelists right then. Let's get on with the program. First, first up, we have Anna, who is going to speak to us about the stats of crime and offences in the central area of Bedford. So that includes Kempston, Putnam, Goldenton, etc. The full map is on screen right now, right then. Take away, Anna. Hello. In Bedford, the possession of crime, the possession of weapon crimes were 23 between March 2020 and January 2021. During lockdown, the crime rates did stay high, although they decreased. At the same time in Kempston, possession of weapon crimes were only four, but the crime in general was high because the most criminal offences were in October with 560 criminal offences. In Wharton, the crime increased from February to March, but decreased in April. Between March 2020 and January 2021, there were only two possession of weapon crimes, and most crime happened in June and October. In Goldington Park, no crime increased from June to August, and the peak of crime was during August with 187 crimes. In Bronham, Great Denham, and Biddeham, the crimes increased from the start of lockdown to March, the highest being June and August, both with 153 crimes in total. For Queen's Park, there was four, uh, there were 146 crimes in March 2020, 2020. The crimes decreased as during January 2021, there were 127 crimes in total. There was only one possession of weapon crime and crimes increased mostly during April and May, although dropped significantly in June. There were 205 crimes during May and 158 crimes during June. Thank you. Thank you for that, Anna. Right, now we are going to head over to Millie to give us the latest crime and offences stats in the west of Bedford. Right. In Milton Keynes, in January 2021, two cases in the last month for weapon possession, 29 cases in the last 12 months, 112 cases in the last three years. For this area, most of the investigations of crimes are complete with no suspect found. Crime went down significantly during lockdown one. It went back up during the summer. However, has been going down since. As a whole, crime has gone down the area in 2020. The most common crime in this area recently is violent and sexual offences, with 43 reported cases in early 2021. In Rushton, in January 2021, four cases in the last month were weapon possession, 32 cases in the last 12 months, 76 cases in the last three years. For this area, most investigations of crimes are complete, with no suspect found. Crime went up significantly during lockdown one. It stayed that way during the summer, however has been going down since. As a whole, crime has gone down this area in 2020. The most common crime in this area recently is violent and sexual offences and antisocial behaviour, with 43 reported cases in early 2021. Once again, thank you for that, Millie. Lastly, we're going to head over to Michelle to have her reaction on the 
for crime and offences that's in the east of Bedford. So for the east, we'll be focusing on two main areas, Cambridgeshire and Hitchin. So as of January 2021, in regards to weapon possession, there were four cases in the last 12 months, uh, in the last month, sorry, 23 cases in the last 12 months, and 76 cases in the last three years for Cambridgeshire. Whilst in Hitchin, there were no reported cases in the last month, 28 cases in the last 12 months, and a total 82 cases in the last three years. For both areas, most investigations of crimes are complete with no suspect found. In regards to lockdown, in Cambridge, crime went down significantly during lockdown one. It did go up during the summer, however, has been going down since. And as a whole, crime has gone down in the area. Whilst in Hitchin, during the time period February 2020 to January 2021, the crime rate didn't change drastically at all. It lowered during lockdown one, then rose slightly in the summer, but then fell back down from September. No dramatic changes at all. Lastly, in Cambridge, the most common crime in the area is antisocial behaviour, with 24 reported cases in early 2021. Whilst in Hitchin, it is violence and sexual offences, with 55 reported cases in early 2021. Thank you. And finally, we're going to now see Michelle's interview with Emily and Jeff, two of the many Bedford office, uh, community officers. Let us look at the interview. Hello, everybody. It's Michelle here, and we're joined with PCSO and PC Emily and Jeff. So, what is community policing? Hi. Um, so, community policing is extremely varied. Um, I, I would say it's probably one of the most varied roles in, in policing. We deal with all sorts of issues um, from sort of long term problem solving of issues that go on and on and on that we want to try and solve and um, work with partner agencies to, to fix, to um, going into schools, talking to young people, um, engaging with the community, giving out crime prevention advice, um, gathering intelligence, conducting warrants, so washing the doors in warrants dealing with um, begging, dealing with low-level antisocial behaviour. Um, it really is the jack of all trades. We deal with anything that affects the community, um, labour disputes, parking issues, <laughs> you name it, we do it. We, um, whilst we're based in, in Kempston, uh, obviously our team covers the north of Bedfordshire, uh, us two specifically across the Kempston, uh, so we're the big for, for Kempston. So, we look at interacting with our communities, the shops, the public, uh, our residents. Uh, we patrol for areas where there's high volume of crime and drugs. Um, we frequently, where powers exist, uh, you stop search powers um, to deter criminals with um, weapons, uh, with drugs, those who may be looking to burgle. Um, using our, our policing powers as well as antisocial behaviour powers, uh, we have a whole Sort of collective of, of different things we can use for each individual uh, area. That's great. So obviously you do all these different things. What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? What does your daily day look like? So our shift pattern over four weeks is uh, is varied between day shifts, which uh, ordinarily starts at eight. Uh, we do eight till sixes. We then do a late shift, which like today, uh, this evening, we're at 12 to 10. And then three days a month, we do a late, late shift, if you like, um, for midnight. We cover most of the day. Um, overnight, we don't have a team on. It's down to the response officers to cover what happens overnight. Um, beginning of our each set, uh, so each week, uh, we do a seven-day rotation over the four weeks. So we're not in every single day, but we do cover every day of the week uh, over the four weeks. Um, so this week, for example, we're on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, our first day, ordinarily, is looking through our emails from our rest days. Uh, we get a lot of emails from partner agents, uh, for residents, um, our key individual uh, networks, uh, our counsellors. So we go through and see what's happened at the weekend. We look at all of our uh, systems and see what crimes have happened in our area, anything that we need to touch on, anything that's short term, any reassurance. Uh, and then we look at our long term problem solving as well. So we spend most of our Half of, at least half of our first day um, just looking at our admin and, and tidying bits and pieces up that we need to do. The rest of our 
Um, our week generally is um, dealing with any appointments we have booked in to see partner agencies. Um, I'm speaking to you guys. Um, we we starting to do a lot of work with some of our local care homes as well as schools. So dealing with um, the young, the vulnerable, um, and those who perhaps over the COVID times have been a little bit neglected by by the police. Um, we also sometimes get called out to jobs, so we'll be out and about just patrolling sort of um, hotspot areas, we call them. So areas where lots of drug dealing might be taking place or we've got specific antisocial behaviour issues going on. So we'll patrol those areas regularly, talk to people that we see there, um, stop search them if necessary, if we have reasonable grounds to do so, or Jeff will. Um, and um, yeah, just get out there and, and see what's going on in the community, really. Meet and greet everyone that's around you. Um, keeping people safe. Um, as part of our uh, my role, especially in this team, whilst we're community policing, um, I'm still trained uh, with full uh, protective equipment. So I carry taser, uh, I can blue lights, we back up our colleagues. We can still deal with live jobs that come in if, uh, if, if time permits and, and the risk is there for us to go. Um, we work in an office uh, here at Halsey Road in Kempston with uh, several other teams that cover uh, Bedford. So we help each other out, whether it's warrants, uh, the books in our days days of action we might go out and have a social media push it might be that the whole team goes out together collectively in one area uh, i think this week was uh, last week was one on queen's park so the whole team came in and went out in queen's park and um yeah, a lot of what we do on uh, social media as well because yeah. um we realize we you know we can't speak to every single member of public and they don't always see us there's only a few of us to cover quite a large area um, so the best way for, to, for us to get it out there, to, to let people know what we're doing on a daily basis is, is through social media. We do a lot of um, stuff on our Facebook page, the Bedford Community um, Police and Facebook page. So it's not it's slightly apart from the normal, the full Bedfordshire Police Facebook page, which is like our corporate comms like the, everywhere in Bedfordshire. Um, we are very specific to just the north urban area of Bedford. So um, it will show you if anyone wants to join up there what, what we're doing on a daily basis as well. Thank you for that. So clearly your job is contained with all these different various interesting aspects. What was it that made you want to work within the police in the first place? Yeah, first, Jeff. And uh, thanks. Um, for me, I always wanted to be a police officer when I was a child. Uh, there were several different areas that I was always interested in. I always knew from a young age I was never going to be a pro footballer, so I got a bit off on that. Um, <laughs> for me, watching um, TV programmes like The Bill when I was a kid and I'm older uh, than the new guys are, was fascinating and such an insight into real life, like drama and, and what you know, the job might entail. Um, for me, when I was a young lad, uh, where I grew up in Surrey, we used to have a beat officer back in the day when you actually had an officer who was out on the street every day, uh, PC, Peter Harris. And um, seeing him, he was like a role model and you were so scared of, of him telling your mum and dad that he'd been doing something naughty and seeing how the presence he had in our state where we live um, was really influential. Um, I went into a different trade for 17 years. Uh, I did apply when I was 18 to um, Hampshire Constabulary, um, but they told me I didn't have enough experience, life experience at the time. So it worked out well because I ended up having a decent career for a bit and um, came back to policing a lot later on. Um, but always had that want and need to help people. Um, and there's no better job to do than the police and fulfilling what something I wanted to do as a kid, but never got around to doing it. Um, so yeah. here I am, yeah, sort of three and a half years in, I'm a police officer and enjoying what I do. For me, it's something slightly like different. I never, when I was younger, intended to, to join the police. I always found it very interesting, always wondered where they were going to, going to what, what was going on. Um, but after my, I did a, a degree at uni, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And actually, I just saw uh, in the paper just an advert for a police community support officer. And it sounded interesting to me. I thought, oh, it's interested in, you know you know what i'm gonna apply for it give it a go um in and i've been here for over 13 and a half years <laughs> doing the same role so um it, it, it's all it, for me it's always been about um being able to help people um and make a difference it's always got to come down to that you don't think you can do this job and continue doing it if, if that's not at the core of what you want to do so for the young people that have are listening to this and now think that they want to become police officers, what would you say to them? What would help them get that role? Well, we agree. Um, I think it's very easy to be distracted, uh, detracted. I think in, in 
the age we live in now, I think there's uh, a bit of a, a bridge, a bit of them and us between the police and the youth. I think it's almost seen as not being very cool to, to speak or like the police. I think if this is something that is a career that you can do, something that you, you want to fulfil, do it. Um, the cadets, haven't we? We do have cadets, get involved with the cadets. So cadets from 18, join the special constabulary. Um, volunteer volunteer role. role. We have the same powers as a police officer and gives you a great insight into being a cop. Uh, I was special myself for three and a half years before I joined. Um, it prepares you for the role uh, and gives you some incredible life experiences. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people that before they join sometimes have done a public services course as well. Um, just gives them a little insight into all different types of public service, I think. Uh, um, I know a lot of people have done that as well, but there's no need for any of that. Um, I don't think. Do you even use GCSEs? I don't know if it's changed now. I think you do a degree and join. Yeah, you technically do a degree or some. Well, you will be soon, I think. We don't think we're going to be able to start that just yet. But it there's a new national model coming out. So being good at school. Um, <laughs> Is advice I'd probably give to someone because I perhaps wasn't the best and didn't come out with the greatest GCSEs. Um, I, I hold very few to my name. I didn't do A levels. Uh, I went off to, to be a chef instead and do a very different career. Um, want to do this job more than anything. If you want to help people, if you feel you can help people, then yeah. I think you need to be a people. Yeah, you need to be able to talk to people yeah. and be a people person for sure. Um, and you know, we're, we're, we're thrown into a lot of really difficult situations in the police and you need to be able to calm people down that are having the worst day of their lives. Um, and you need to be able to speak to people. That's our advice. <laughs> talk. Another one, talk to us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, what message do you have for the young people at home when it comes to the bridge between you guys and the police, you guys and the young people? It's... It's a good question and it's something that we're trying to work on, um, especially locally here. It's like in the, in, as soon as COVID uh, restrictions are completely eased, it'd be a bit more easier for us to engage and uh, have events in the public eye and, and be able to talk to people. But don't be scared of us. Don't look at us derogatory. Don't look at us as negative influences. Try and hold us in a positive light and for all the wrongs that is other sides of the police, we're human beings. Um, we're human beings who, who join to do a job to help um, and, and to care ultimately. And for every one bad egg that there is, there's you know a thousand good eggs that, that want to make a difference. Um, I think for, for, for the younger people, I would love it, especially for the really young, that are just come up and say hi to us. Um, for those sort of in their early teens and, and mid teens, your your choices you make now massively influence what happens in the future if you make a bad choice now that's going to stick with you um and i'm not here to preach certainly with uh youth culture at the moment is um is hold your own have a bit of personal pride and think about the actions you have now have a massive reaction in the future um it's something that we talk about quite often with some of the youth that we um stop and discuss and i hate to tell the youth but people younger than i um no, if, younger than you. if you were to smoke you know a spliff it's illegal. Um, repeated use of this will end up getting you in uh, in trouble, getting you a criminal conviction um, with something that you might find as being quite blasé and silly. Um, it could stop you flying to, say, America with a drug conviction, getting a job in the future. So it, it wouldn't matter how hard you worked at school and college. It's these little mistakes now that you can rectify. And do you know what? If you're not sure, come and talk to us. That's all I would say is, is talk to us. Have that. We're not, as, talk. we're not as scary or horrible, I would like to hope uh, some of you may think. I know that some young people probably do have um, negative associations with the police or negative um, incidents with the police because we're there for a specific reason. We're there because we've been called there because there's been antisocial behaviour reports or they match description they need to be searched. Gen you know, we genuinely love it when young people come and speak to us and talk to us and want to learn more about what we do. We love sharing you know what we can about the world of policing and how difficult it is and we'd um the vast majority of us really want to break down that barrier but it's very difficult um because we're seen a little bit as the enemy um which is really sad because actually essentially what we're here for is to, to help and protect them just as we we do everyone and believe it or not we're not here to criminalize i'd hate to criminalize a child or a young person if i can help it um there's a lot of work that yeah. goes on in the background to help young people who are who may be heading that way. Um, 
we're with ourselves, youth offending team. Well, we've got an old bosun um, team who work with sort of um, in the gangs and gun, guns crime. Um, and um, we would do everything we can just to try and prevent young people from becoming criminalised and, and, and going that direction, everything we can. Thank you for that. It's been very inspiring, and I'm sure the young people at home now have a better understanding of what it is the police do. Thank you for your time. No worries. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. And that is all from us tonight. We are back very soon with Bedford tonight. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.